security profiles in our previous videos we have discussed about antivirus profile and anti spyware profile right so in this video let's understand about a vulnerability profile and uh, practically with the hands on experience let's understand how palo alto helps us to detect a vulnerable traffic detect and block it okay all right so in general before getting into the lamp right in general uh, a vulnerability is a weakness or a error in the system that when exploited it can compromise the confidentiality availability and integrity of the data that's stored in them through unauthorized access or uh, elevation of privileges or a kind of denial of service okay so in general a vulnerability is the weakness or the error in the system and um, which can if, if in case it is exploited okay if in case it is exploited that will lead to compromise the confidentiality or availability of the integrity of the data stored in it all right so uh, we'll go so let's understand about the vulnerability profile with this topology uh, if you see here uh, it's a little different from the topology which we have discussed in our previous sections because in our previous sections we have uh, uh, we used to two topologies one is internal uh, internal sorry inside zone and the outside zone however in this uh, you know uh, topology or in this video we are using a different uh, topology one is internet zone okay which is nothing but the outside zone which we refer in our previous video okay uh, so this is not not inside zone this is outside okay um, it's an internet zone the traffic that's coming from internet all right and uh, in addition to that we have another zone that's dmz demilitarized zone uh, it's a part of an organization okay organization network all right so uh, these are the two zones we are having okay just consider a situation uh, we have a server that is placed uh, by the organization in the demilitarized zone and uh, any users over the internet they can access to the server okay so when a user from the internet uh, maybe just consider that we have an uh, multiple users here when we have um, users they are trying to connect to the server their traffic will be uh, through internet their traffic will be coming to the palo alto firewall and um, based upon the checkings and uh, it will be allowed to access the server that is placed in the de demilitarized zone in the organization network all right so this is how the topology is and uh, so we have a attacker here okay so we have an attacker here uh, a hacker here in the internet uh, using a kali linux he is trying to you know instead of just accessing the web server he is trying uh, just consider that he is running some scripts to understand all the vulnerabilities uh, you know he is he is doing some scanning to understand all the vulnerabilities of this server so that once he have this information he can exploit it right so this is also when vulnerable traffic right because it's not required for him to uh, you know run any kind of a scanning to the server that's in the dmc actually as per the requirement organization has placed a server here so that any uh, authorized user can access it okay any user in the internet can access it so if he want to uh, if if he is an if uh, if he want to use it he can access it but uh, instead of that uh, he is doing some malicious activity uh, means this is a scenario okay he is doing uh, malicious activity by which uh, he is uh, using some tool like nmap or uh, zenmap something like that he is running some uh, vulnerable uh, script uh, to to check the vulnerabilities okay he is doing some scanning and to understand the vulnerabilities of this server okay so basically this is a vulnerable traffic right he he is not authorized to perform the scanning and he is not authorized to get this information so we'll configure a palo alto uh, we will configure a security profile a vulnerability security uh, profile in a palo alto so that when uh, this kind of a scanning traffic is coming then palo alto will detect that traffic and it will drop it okay so this is the uh, thing we are going to do here all right so i'll just uh, move a little outside fine so uh, if you remember in our previous video we have used the same interface for our inside zone but uh, be careful in this video we are using this for our internet zone okay um, we'll be doing uh, the the changes means we'll be uh, modifying the uh, zones accordingly all right so here uh, we have a server here so when i have a uh, when i say server actually this is a router okay this is a router and uh, we are just going to configure uh, http https uh, you know uh, server uh, so service on it okay and we'll make it as an 
server fine so first of all uh, let's open this and let's put an ip like um, okay i'll put an ip like 36 here okay fine so this machine is going to have an ip address 10 10 10 36 all right i think we already have that let me check it okay let's open our kali linux so okay we'll enlarge it so okay the username is kali and password is kali all right so we have logged in and the right top corner here is the ethernet settings uh, if i right click here edit connection okay ethernet connection one is the connection that we are looking for i'm clicking settings to check the ip because i remember in our pre uh, in my previous uh, lab i have set this ip okay by default uh, you will be seeing here as like a dhcp all right so in and you will not see any ip address means uh you have config if you have configured a dhcp then you'll be getting an uh, ip from the dhcp server right but um if in case by default it will be in the dhcp all right and if you don't have a dhcp server then you will not get any ip so in that case what you need to do just click here make it manual and um, assign an ip address to it okay so i have already assigned the ip address um, so you need to click add and here you have to define the ip so i have given the ip 10 10 10 36 it's a slash 24 network and the gateway that uh, i have given here is the palo alto interface all right i have also given the dns ip informations it comes under ipv4 settings okay so just save it and uh very important as like uh once you make any changes here in the ethernet settings right you need to um, refresh that interface as like you can just click here and uh disconnect it and uh, enable it again okay anyway we have not made any changes so far but uh, just for your information if you make any changes in the uh, interfaces make sure that you have bounced that interface all right and um okay so this is how we need to configure the ip address uh we'll, we'll make the rest of the configurations in the firewall end and uh, the server end. it will get we'll get back here okay so maybe i'll just check for the connectivity uh, by clicking in the terminal okay this is the terminal uh if you want to check the ip address you have configured if you can give the command if config so if you see right this is the ip address we have configured it all right i can also click uh, check the reachability ping um it's 10 dot 10 actually uh means when you type right uh it will automatically you know give the suggestions it's like based on your previous thing so 10 10 10 100 is the palo alto interface ip address if i click here i'm getting response okay and also i'll just click ping 8.8.8.8 .8 i don't get any response because i don't have a security policy okay uh, yes of course earlier we have a security policy to allow connection from inside to outside but i have deleted those okay so currently we don't have a security policy to allow a connectivity towards internet and that's the reason we it's not getting connected all right so we'll hold here for now we'll go back to our palo alto and uh, we'll configure this firewall as well sorry this server as well and then we'll get back here and uh okay before going to palo alto uh, we'll finish here okay we'll finish this server connection so as i said right this is a router okay so maybe i can enlarge it fine show run so so far there is no configurations all right fine so these are uh the one which i configured in my previous lab anyway uh, i'll show you how to do it so what are the things we are going to configure it all right first of all uh let's get into the config mode and we'll give the host name 
as dmz underscore server okay and uh we need to configure the ip address so as per the topology uh maybe i didn't mention the ip address right 172.16.0.9 okay 172.0.9 this side and um let's have 100 this side okay so let's have 172.16.0.100 this side so first of all, I will configure. Okay. I'll just. Okay, I hope this is okay for you. All right, so already we have given the host name, right? Uh, now we need to give the IP address, okay? So what's the interface? It's fast ethernet uh, zero slash zero. Interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. IP address is 172.16.0. Uh, maybe I'll put 9, uh, 255.255.255.0. Okay. And no shut. Fine. Uh, okay. All right. So we have configured IP address and the interface is up now. It turned to upstate now then we'll configure ip http server ip http secure mm -hmm. server okay ip domain name cisco perform Okay, and uh, crypto key generate or a C model one zero twenty four. All right, and we'll enable SSH IP SSH version two user name as Shiva and password is Cisco okay then what else line vty 0 to 4 and um login password again cisco then transport in all okay fine and uh, one more important thing we need to write a route here okay we'll 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 do a, a default route pointing towards this interface okay so whatever traffic it want to reach it should go to this interface ip route 0 .0 .0, 0.0.0 .0 .0 0 the next hop is 172.16.0.100 that's it so do write all right the configuration is saved now okay show run so we have this crypto pk okay username password ssh interface and okay for fast ethernet zero slash zero we have uh, configured the ip address and um all right so http server enabled okay all right so let's go to palo alto now i'm just going to palo alto as i said earlier uh, this interface was used as in the eth one slash one was earlier used for inside zone okay now uh, we don't have any uh, any zone like internet zone we'll just modify it as per this topology okay i'll just go here network first of all zone all right so if i see here right uh fine so the outside zone i'll just rename it as internet zone okay i'll just rename it as an internet zone 
click OK. Maybe for, uh, you know, as per this topology, we don't have it ETH 1 slash 2. Maybe uh, I can delete it. It's not required. All right. So if you don't, this is inside zone, but this is internet zone. OK. All right. And this DMZ zone I have already created. Um, OK. I think it's, I'll just delete it and show you how to create it. Just click add here. You can, um, and also you can just avoid confusion. You can delete this as well, this inside zone as well. It's not required. Okay, we have added it to some other profile so that it's not allowing. That's fine. But as of now, we don't have any, uh, you know, Ethernet that's added to this inside zone. Okay, uh, so that's fine. So we'll. We'll, we are just concentrating about internet zone and the DMC zone, right? I'm just creating our new zone that is DMC, all right? And it is type is L3 and uh, which interface is going to be part of a DMC is ETH1 slash 3, okay? So just click add 1 slash 3, click OK. So done, okay? So if you see right, uh, ETH one slash one is part of internet zone, the outside zone, and uh, ETH one slash three is part of DMC zone. All right. So we'll just go to the interface to make sure that that has the right IP address. Okay. And um, ETH one slash one, it's already configured with ten 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 hundred slash twenty four, and uh, ETH one slash three is one seventy two sixteen zero dot hundred. That's already configured. Okay. If not, you can also configure it fine so can just click it to just check see um see it's it's done with the internet zone okay all right you can just ignore this one slash two for now we are not using it okay just ignore for now just concentrate about eth one slash one and one slash three all right so now interfaces are configured uh with the uh, you know correct zones we'll just go to the virtual router here and so by default, uh, you will not see this ETH one slash three. Okay, uh, you will not see like this. So it would be like this, and mm -hmm. uh, as I'm continuing from my previous lab, it's showing me. Okay, so in order to add it, just click it and uh, add that interface. Because once you add, only then it will be part of that virtual router. And also, it's very important that. Uh, See earlier, you might have uh, done the default routing, right? So you'll be done, you might have done a default routing pointing towards uh, the outside zone. So whatever traffic that's coming from inside, we are pointing towards outside. Uh, the reason being that is to have the internet connectivity. However, as per this topology, we want to establish a connection from internet towards or uh, the internet zone towards the DMZ. All right. So in order to do so, uh, we need to have a uh, you know, routing between internet zone as well as the DMC zone. All right. Uh, so when I say internet zone, uh, as per this topology, we are using 10, 10, 10, 0 slash 24 for this zone, right? But in a real time or in a production environment, this would be the internet. All right. So you'll be having a routing accordingly. So uh, here in this uh, topology, I'm as I said, I'm using this network for internet zone. So I need to write a route to reach the DMZ, okay. Say for example, if I want to reach a 172 network, I need to point the traffic towards this way, All right? I'll just go here, the static route. So this default route is part of our previous lab, okay? It's anyway, it's not required anymore because uh, we don't have this. I'll just add a route here. DMC route means a route to DMC. Okay. Because thing is I'm going to initiate traffic from this way, right? It means I'm going to initiate a traffic from this way. So the destination is 172.16.0.0 slash 24. All right. And uh through in which interface it should exit? It it should exit via one slash three and uh I'm just giving the IP address of the server as the next door because as per our topology, we have only one uh, device, right? That's it. Okay. 
all right so we have a uh, zones configured interfaces configured with the right ip address and we have a routing configured we need to check the security policies all right so under policy i am coming to security so earlier we have into outside zone so i'm just modifying it okay i just click it i'll just rename it as like uh, internet to dmc okay so source um, means it's any inside right i'll just make it as like any okay uh, either i can specifically make it as like uh, the source is dmz or uh, i can make it any right so i'll just make it any and also destination i'll just delete it and it's i'll just make it as like any okay either it from um, internet to dmz or dmz to internet all right so application it's allowed allowed fine so it's it's allowed right usage okay it's not allowed. okay this equal to fine so now we can click okay all right so basically we have done all the basic uh, configurations uh to have the connectivity between internet zone to the dmz but our uh you know uh, objective is uh to do the vulnerability or to to detect the vulnerability traffic right so in order to do so as you know we need to create a vulnerability profile first and we need to add that profile to the existing security policy so in order to do so first go to objective sorry the objects under objects you will be seeing the options like vulnerability protection okay so in our previous video we have worked in the anti spyware and antivirus so in this video we are going to look on the vulnerability protection okay if you click here you will be seeing two uh, default profiles okay the vulnerability profiles one profile is strict uh, it has 10 rules and the other one is a default it has six rules okay so we have discussed about this rules and severities actions in our previous video right when we discussed about spyware so now what i'm going to do i'll just create a new one okay um, so what i'll do i'll just it, it depends okay if you want to just clone it you can just clone and click okay it's cloned right or else if you want to create a new role you can just create my vulnerable profile all right uh, maybe just consider that i'll just create a new role means i'm not uh, cloning it okay just add i'll just add one rule rule one okay vulnerable rule one fine uh, threat name any and um, action type it's set to default right it will uh, reset both side uh, i'll just make it as drop okay and host type it can be either a client side or it can be either a server side or it can be any so when i say any it it's about both the side right i'll make it any and uh, as you know packet capture by default it is disabled and if you want to capture only single packet it will capture single packet and if you want to have an extended capture as well it is possible so in this video uh, we'll enable a single packet so that i'll show you how to uh, you know where we can get that uh, packet right the vulnerable packet all right so category as well uh, means there are multiple categories that comes under vulnerability that's brute force code execution you know uh, dos info information leak security credential so on okay scan okay so these are all the categories different categories that comes under vulnerability okay if you see right scan scanning is also considered as a vulnerability which means that if any source is trying to scan a destination okay if the traffic is going through the uh, palo alto then the scanning traffic is considered as a vulnerability all right fine so we are going to perform uh, this testing using the scan traffic only right okay fine we'll make it any and severity is also any all right so and this is about the cv information just like uh, as you know uh, if you have any cvs that's declared you can add this for reference and this is a vendor id for it okay i'll just click okay it's a simple rule and um, exceptions are there so we have discussed about this exceptions in our uh, you know antivirus and uh, spyware profiles right by default 
it will not show you any signatures but if you click here you'll be seeing all the signature if you see here right it has 19321 signatures uh, for you know vulnerabilities all right you can also export the same to check it all right so i'll just click okay my rule is created okay my sorry the profile is created so now i'll go to my security policy click security so in my security profile or uh, the security policy i'm going to associate the vulnerability profile that i have created now so as you know in order to associate it we need to go to action and um, we can associate only to a policy that is set to allowed right so it is allowed and uh, by default it is none i'm clicking profile and here we are going to associate a vulnerability profile right by clicking here this is the vulnerability profile that i have created right and these two are the default profiles the strict and the default or the two default profiles that we have seen earlier okay and this is the profile that i have created i've clicked it okay i have associated all right so let me make i'll commit it commit the changes so if you refer this topology we have a kali linux here uh, let's consider him as an attacker and uh he's having an ip address 10 10 10 uh, 36 and uh he's connecting to eth one slash one for a palo alto and uh the other interface of one slash three uh it's connecting as a dmz zone uh it's connected to the uh you know server means basically it's a router and we make it as a server right and uh, that server is acting uh, running in the ip 172.16.0.9 right so uh before exploiting or before running a vulnerable traffic and ch uh, checking whether it's detected first of all let's try to establish a connectivity means let, let's try to ping from here to ping okay it should work i'll just come here open so in the meantime let me check whether it is committed so it's 70 percentage 98 mm, let's wait for a couple of seconds so until it's get completed all right 99 Okay. So it's almost done. Let's parallelly get into our Kali Linux. Kali is the password. Okay. Fine. Uh, this time let's try to ping uh, 172.16. Oh, sorry. Ping 172.16. Okay, 16.0.9, right? So this is the IP address of router. Let me see. All right. So now I'm getting response from the router. Basically, which means that it's confirmed uh, the connectivity, the connectivity between uh, this server uh, means this Kali Linux towards this server is done. Means we are able to reach from here to here. All right. A same. So now the attacker is having the access or the uh, the connectivity towards the server. All right. Fine. All right. So um, let's also check the connectivity from the router. So the, uh, means the server from this side. Let's try to ping the Kali Linux. Ping 10.10.10.36, right? All right, so the success rate is 100%. So basically, the connectivity is done. All right. So now, let, means uh, it's assured that the connectivity is done. And uh, now let's do one thing. Let's let's run a scan. Okay. Let's run some scanning uh, kind of a script from Kali Linux. All right. I'm just getting into Kali Linux. And, um, okay so we'll do some kind of a scan okay so if i search with scan um okay i'll use nmap okay fine so again it's coming here so if you see right th these are the simple uh scripts okay so, so if you're not um, uh 
if you don't know much about kali linux it's fine just go here uh, just type kali linux or even in the terminal you can means this is the script uh, the syntax okay okay what i'll do in map dash v okay and uh, if you see right i'm just using this one dash if an a and space the ip address of the server okay i'm this is the command n map dash v dash capital a 172.16.0.9 so once i start this uh, script right once i start this command it will start to scan okay it will start to scan the destination server to see all the open ports and all those information i show you all the information okay i'll show you okay i'll initiate it if you see right it it's starting to scan the server so if you come here right we'll go here in the palo alto we'll get into monitor and click threats refresh it see we are uh, seeing vulnerabilities okay we, we are seeing vulnerabilities and if you see right the source is 10.10.10.36 and destination is 172.16.0.9 okay and uh, see web browsing information kind so it's it's still running okay uh, usually this type of a scanning will will run for uh, you know um, minimum of 3 5 minutes and post to that let's refresh it okay if you see uh, these are all the old labs okay uh, old old timestamp but this is the new timestamp all right so if you refresh it right uh, let's see if there is any any anything new that's captured here all right so you see right there are multiple new new events that is captured recently okay so you see nmap scripting engine so basically palo alto detects that this particular or the user from the outside zone is running a scanning okay uh, if you remember that when we created the rule right uh, when we created the vulnerability uh, rule scanning is also part of it the category right so it detects that some scanning is running and as per uh, the vulnerability profile it's created it's considered that as the the vulnerable traffic right so it is dropped what is the action it is performed it is dropped okay see because we, we we have created we have created the vulnerability protection profile and set the action to be drop right see so this is the uh, profile that we have associated to the uh, our security profile and that's the reason we are seeing that traffic is dropped in general what happened right so uh, in general when we when we uh, run this kind of a scanning uh, okay if, if we don't have uh, any vulnerability right if we don't have any vulnerability profile this scanning will be once it's completed we can see all this information okay maybe i'll show you uh, the differences like currently we are running with the scanning means uh, the vulnerability profile so that it's getting dropped right based on our requirement it's getting dropped once it is done i'll just remove this profile and show you the difference all right and also you can go here uh, and one more important thing uh, to see this uh, you should have a license okay uh, only then you can able to do the lab you can also check in the acc let me check in threat activity for well, last over So we have a very minimal traffic that's the reason the index is not showing high but uh, in a production you'll be seeing uh, the index value right all right so this is how uh, you know palo alto helps us to detect and uh, you know drop or take the action accordingly uh, basically any kind of vulnerability traffic that's passing through palo alto it can easily detect and it will perform the action whatever we order it fine all right if you want to understand the differences uh, means uh, what are the informations it will scan right maybe uh, you can just go back to your security policy under uh, security so we can remove that vulnerability profile that we have associated here 
okay maybe i'll just go from here and we'll go to action and i'll just remove it okay now we don't have any you know vulnerability profile so in that case let's see how it works it's basically in, in that case if we don't have a vulnerability profile that is associated to a security policy uh, then palo alto will never drop that packet it will allow to pass and uh, the hacker or the attacker will get to know the entire information about the destination okay let's see how it works Seventy percentage, ninety-eight, and so if you remember, uh, now we have removed that uh, vulnerability profile. Okay, uh, so last time when we have a vulnerability profile here, so uh, when the attacker uh, using Kali Linux, he he's performing the scanning towards the server. Palo Alto detects that scanning scan, uh, Palo Alto detects that it's a vulnerable traffic and it dropped it right it didn't allow to reach the server however uh, now okay now we have removed it now we have removed the vulnerability profile from here so that let's see how it works now we'll repeat the same command so usually it will take some time okay it will perform the scanning let's wait and see so it will it, it will see all the you know uh, see it will it, it will uh, see all the ports okay what are the ports open um, the port 80 443 to 22 23 so it's 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 performing the scanning okay it is scanning the uh, this particular server okay and it is getting all the complete informations right actually this is a this is not required right it means it is some vulnerable traffic or it's 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 considered as invulnerable right see so basically this is how it works okay so it will it will take some time and it will perform the deep scanning and it will get all the informations even it will get to know about the you know uh, not only the ports uh, also the OIS that's running in the um, you know uh, running in the see iOS informations SSL informations The Cisco OS information score router, okay, and see port number. So it it will scan and it will get all the complete informations, okay. All right. So uh, this is how it works, okay. This is how vulnerability profile is helping us, uh, or uh, it's used in the Palo Alto firewall to detect and mitigate any vulnerable traffic. All right.